Okay, so I thought I would uh, just record a little bit of an explanation for uh, how I did my kill on the custodian's eye. So I'm just going to show my build real quick for the people that want to see that. So these are my trait points. Um, Gunslinger, Bulletstorm, Hunter, Hunter's Focus. These are my uh, relic fragments. And then my mutators and mods. And that's uh, all I used. So... I'm going to go into more in-depth explanation of all of these and uh, kind of go into why I chose what I did, why I didn't choose some things, uh, and how I distributed, say, trait points, and how I um, decided on this going with this strategy to actually end up killing the custodian side. Now, I do know that my setup is definitely not the optimal kill time. You can probably get a, a bunch better. This is post-patch Nightfall. You could probably do Crescent Moon, and it would probably perform better you can maybe make some other swaps as well but uh, i ended up uh, going on this okay so i'll start by explaining the traits i've picked um, most of these don't matter uh, because you're not dodging you're not taking damage you're not um, needing health regen or anything but there are a few that do so first off you want long shot but that's for free on the hunter archetype which is great you need this to not eat damage fall off from uh, your weapon because um, then you would be doing suboptimal damage and that's obviously garbage uh, you need spirit because for the mod power generation because you want uh, the most importantly the second run through of dreadwalker which is nightfall's mod handling is really nice to have just for the extra recoil reduction I mean, it's not necessary. You can just deal with the recoil and pull down a little bit more. Um, but it is really nice to have. And I mean, we already have so many useless straight points. So why not spend them in handling? Um, I guess swiftness. Swiftness is one that's nice because I don't know the rules for speed kills and when you should start the timer. I'm not sure if you would start it when you walk through the door or when the encounter actually starts. So I started the timer when I saw the health bar appear on the top of my screen and when the health bar disappeared because I killed him. So um, I, I picked when the health bar appeared because, you know, it gives me a lower number. <laughs> Always like that. But uh, I'm also just not sure on the rules. Okay, next let's go over the classes, uh, the archetypes, I suppose I should call them, and their skills. So Hunter, Gunslinger, obviously, the the Divine Duo, they just do so much uh, weapon damage this way. You could maybe try a mod build, but I'm not sure how it would work out. And I don't have Archon leveled at the moment, as you can see, so that wasn't even an option for me. What skills do we pick for Hunter Gunslinger? Well, Quick Draw, that's just garbage here. Let's be real, we're not going, this isn't going to do any uh, respectable damage. Uh, Sidewinder. Well, with the strat I'm using, almost all of my damage is coming from the primary fire of Nightfall. Sidewinder is not useful to reload cycling firearms. And Bulletstorm. Obviously, we want the fire rate. So that's why we pick Bulletstorm. Fire rate and reload speed. Reload speed we don't actually take advantage of in this fight. But the fire rate is exactly what we need. When we're in full auto mode, it's just a great extra boost to our damage. And then the perks that we will take advantage of our slate of hand using a relic reloads equipped firearm i do this once in the fight um just to save me a reload as well as generate some mod power due to the relic i chose quick hands firearms reload uh is faster bonuses doubled if the mag is empty so we only want to reload on an empty mag this only happens i think once in the fight and it's very very minor and then these are just passives now hunter has to be your primary archetype because you want dead to rights. You need to keep your hunter skill up for the entire fight. It's just so much damage that you would lose if you, your hunter skill ever goes off. So you would never slot Gunslinger in the primary. For the skill, Hunter's Focus, it's the best damaging skill out of all of them. Technically Shroud um, can outstrip it for a couple seconds. Shroud can do better. Sustain, Hunter's Focus is going to absolutely demolish it in the long run hunter's mark is just basically worse uh hunter's focus here it's just not even close and then all of the perks here we're not going to take advantage of these weapons will be decided by our archetypes while well, we're doing hunter gunslinger so obviously pretty much all of our damage will come from primary fire picked nightfall because dreadwalker 
last 10 seconds, I have a ring that increases it, but base is 10 seconds, and that lines up perfectly with the Custodian's Eye's scripted first attack. The Mutator is Momentum. Momentum is simply the best damage mutator in the game. Obviously, there's a condition on it that you need it to be on a fast-firing, somewhat large mag or not super slow reload weapon. Hero's Sword, completely irrelevant for this fight. We do not use it. And Tech 22, um, I just picked this handgun because it has a 10% crit chance, which is the highest out of any handgun. We barely use it to do damage. Really, we only use this weapon for two purposes. We want to proc Twisting Wounds, and we need Energy Wool. The relic that we use, uh, we use the Ruined Heart uh, because it generates mod power. And we need the second um, mod charge on Nightfall to finish him off. So with um, the Ruined Heart, it just generates 500 mod power over 10 seconds. The extra mod power is a godsend for being able to pull it off just that little bit quicker, which will allow the kill to be that little quicker. For Relic Fragments, these three will be the most impactful for your damage on this setup. Okay, for the Rings and Amulet, um, as I alluded to earlier, since we're using Twisting Wounds, we're going to get Abrasive Amulet. Butcher's Fetish is really close, with they're both having 15% crit chance. Abrasive Whetstone has a little bit higher crit damage, but Butcher's Fetish lasts a little bit longer. However, um, I determined that taking the time to proc a second Butcher's Fetish with a heavy melee attack was a little bit harder than just swapping weapons, uh, shooting with my secondary, and then dropping an energy wall that I was going to shoot at my feet anyways. So since I was going to drop the energy wall for a second time anyways, I would need to switch to my handgun, so why not just also quickly shoot uh, a few bullets and get the crit or the weak spot hit to proc a bleed for a second time. For our rings, we picked Xanya's Malice because once it, uh, it deals weak spot damage that stacks uh, by 10% for three times, and it's up pretty much the whole fight. Probability Cord increases crit damage by 30%. This is extremely strong for the sole reason that our crit, uh, crit chance is so high. If our crit chance was lower, Probability Cord would actually be a poor choice. Next is Ring of Flawed Beauty, which increases ranged weak spot damage by 25% if you hit a weak spot but reduces range damage by 15% when failing to hit a weak spot. Now, mo the lion's share of our damage comes from when we're hitting weak spots in this fight. And then the last ring might be a surprise, is Zohi's ring. We're not picking another damage ring, and we're picking Zohi's ring for the mod duration. We want the extra second and a half on Dreadwalker. Believe it or not, it's better than any other damage ring we could have equipped. Okay, now to some fight mechanics. So, most bosses can have modifiers, and on higher difficulty levels, they'll have more modifiers. So, what are boss modifiers? Well, if you don't know, they're the little things that are under the boss's health bar uh, that are words. So, they can be stuff like empathy, like hardy, like drain, spiteful, regenerator, there's a list of them. And each one provides some unique effect to that boss. So... Why am I talking so much about these modifiers? Well, they're actually important. When you're trying to kill bosses as fast as you can, you really want to avoid specific modifiers that will elongate the fight. But for our purposes, we just don't want it to have hardy, regenerator, thick skin, and I don't think the custodians I can have empathy, but I could be wrong on that. Okay, so I thought I would just go through the fight here and just explain the things I do and what went well and what I sort of screwed up on uh, during the fight. So, well, first off, uh, I have to mention the energy wall setup. You have to find a good position to put it and a good position to crouch behind it because you can definitely get hit behind the wall and he will kill you if you mess up your positioning in any way. So. You have it might take a little bit of playing around with to get like a comfortable position, and I know I definitely took a <laughs> took more than a few deaths to uh, where I thought I was safe. But if you can get it right, you you just stand there and lay into them the whole time, which is so lovely. Then I cast Hunter's Focus, 
and crouch while aiming, but not shooting the boss because I want to mark him and get the full benefits of Hunter's Focus. So after I do that, you can see it's immediately Relic Time and uh, Bullet Storm. So the Relic gives me a damage boost, Bullet Storm gives me a fire rate boost. Bullet Storm is 20 seconds, the Relic only lasts 10 seconds, but uh, because Bullet Storm is more impactful to our damage overall, uh, we're going to pop it second because we want to maximize our time shooting under Bullet Storm. Uh, after everything there is set up, I, I shoot the boss with the Tech 22 here. I just shoot a few more times. The point is, I need the crit to get the bleed proc so I can get the effects from abrasive amulet for my increased crit chance and crit damage. If it doesn't proc in 10 or so bullets, um, I just jump off the edge. <laughs> jump off the edge, restart the fight, say unlucky. So after I get the bleed proc, you switch to nightfall. Uh, I pop the mod immediately, as you can see here, and then I just go to town and I, it's so nice. Once again, energy wall blocks everything. You just get to absolutely lay into him um, in the weak spot, and it does so much damage. As you can see here, I paused it early actually. I keep going, and he's already only has like 30% of his health left. It's so, so strong. So, there, right there, is the vast majority of your damage. Now, you just need to end the fight while limping over the finish line, really. So, after going ham on him um, and Dreadwalker finishes, I want to empty my mag again. So as you can see, two, one, zero. But I don't want to reload yet because I'm going to take advantage of the relic to reload um, in a little bit because I need to pop the relic anyways. So why not get the double benefits for optimal performance? So before reloading, I will switch to my Tech 22 again. And here's where I mess up a little bit, because I immediately shoot him to get bleed, but what I should do is I should drop the mod in front of me first, then shoot him to get bleed, so I maximize my time under Abrasive Amulet's buff again. So I messed that up a little bit, but I still thought the fight was good enough that I, I would use this as my footage. So I mess up the order, but doesn't really matter. Point is, I just proc bleed, and then switch back to Nightfall immediately to um, be able to reload with my Relic. So when I switch back to Nightfall, zero bullets left, but I will use the Relic to get my mod power so I can get Dreadwalker as soon as possible. So pop the Relic, get the reload, shoot the whole mag again. As you can see there, I missed a fair few bullets into his armor. I'll just replay my poor, poor aim again. Um, yeah, that's like, that's, that's rough. <laughs> oh well, oh well. Um, but ideally you're hitting the weak spot the whole time. I definitely missed. But you get the reload, empty your mag. This time reloading is a little bit quicker um, than using the relic to reload again. So we're just going to shoot him, finish him off. And here, right around now, you should be getting your mod back again. So the moment I hear the ding, I just hit F to pop my mod, and yeah, now we just go to town again. Uh, here he should die, and there he goes. And that's the whole fight, really. Um, it's super safe. You don't even need to dodge at all, provided you set yourself up behind the energy wall correctly. It's so nice. And yeah, that's the story of uh, how I managed to absolutely destroy the custodian's eye in about 41 seconds if you enjoyed this video it would be great if you would like and uh, maybe share it but yeah that's it for me and i'll probably be posting more videos sort of like this probably a little bit more condensed this time was just longer because i was explaining some things for the first time but i'll hopefully get a bit better and become more concise